Stitch in the ditch quilting is often recommended for new quilters as an easy way to finish their quilt on a sewing machine. But I actually think stitch in the ditch quilting is a horrible technique. So today I'm gonna to share three reasons why you never wanna use stitch in the ditch quilting and one reason why you might wanna use it. Welcome to Eva's Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. So stitch in the ditch quilting or stitching is stitching that is done right in the seam of the piecing. So when you're stitching the whole, the three layers of your quilt sandwich together, you're stitching right in the seams of your piecing. The term stitch in the ditch might be borrowed from dressmaking where it's used for things like putting waistbands on clothing where you wanna have stitching, but you want it to be pretty invisible. So you're stitching right in the seam or in the shadow of a seam. When machine quilting first became popular, quilting by stitching in the ditch was very common. I think part of that was because this technique was so new and a lot of quilters considered this kind of quilting cheating. And so people that did their quilting on machine, they wanted to try and hide and camouflage their stitches so that it wouldn't be as obvious that they were quilting on machine. But then free motion quilting and walking foot quilting and all these great techniques that we have now, they came on the scene and they kind of took over. And so now machine quilting is not a shameful thing as it used to be. And it's actually more popular than hand quilting. So even though there are so many machine quilting options, there are still people that recommend quilting in the ditch or stitching in the ditch as a beginner technique. I do not recommend this except in very specific circumstances. So here's my opinion about stitching in the ditch. The first reason why I don't recommend it is it is difficult. It's one of those techniques that it seems like it should be easy you just have a seam and you're following along that seam. However, to get your stitches to stay right on that line is much more difficult than it seems. And so it really annoys me when people recommend this for beginners because it's setting them up with an expectation that they probably won't be able to meet. Yes, there is a sewing machine foot with a guide that will help you to be able to keep your stitches in the right spot. But even with the guide, it's pretty difficult. I've heard quilters jokingly call this stitch near the ditch or stitch beside the ditch just because it is so difficult to keep your stitches right in the seam. Ask any experienced quilter and they will agree this is a technique that is more difficult than it seems like it should be. If you press your seams to one side, that will help add to the difficulty. And that's because when you have your fabric and you press your seams to one side, then one side of your seam has more layers of fabric than the other side. So when your presser foot is going across the seam, it's not flat in that particular spot. Now that is not going to make a difference in your finished quilt that your seams are pressed to one side and it's not perfectly flat, but it will make it slightly more difficult when your uh, sewing machine foot is not going on a flat part. So that will make it more difficult. But if you press your seams open, that will eliminate that little bump and it will make it flatter, but that will lead to problem number two. My second problem with stitching in the ditch is that it can potentially weaken the seams of your piece. So the purpose of quilting is to hold your layers together, your piecing, your batting, and your backing. However, if you press your seams open and you can do a perfect stitch in the ditch, that means your stitches are going in between your two pieces of fabric, right in that seam. So that, first of all, it could weaken the stitches, it could potentially even break the stitches of the seam that's holding those pieces of fabric together. And those quilting stitches don't have anything to hang on to. They're not hanging on to the fabric itself, they're just hanging on to the thread. So it's not a secure method if you do it perfectly. 
So that's a situation where doing that technique perfectly is actually not great for your quilt project. The third reason why I don't recommend stitch in the ditch quilting is because it's kind of boring. Quilting gives you an opportunity to add a secondary design over top of your piecing design that you have. And ideally, those two designs should work together. Your quilt design should support and enhance your piecing. Even if you struggle with ideas for how to quilt your finished pieces, there's so much inspiration available that you shouldn't have to be stuck just doing quilting in the ditch. There's no reason to have to use boring quilting in your project. So take the time to practice either free motion quilting or walking foot quilting so that your quilting can enhance your project and not just hold the layers together. But there is one time when you might want to use stitch in the ditch quilting. And that is when you don't want your quilting to be noticeable at all. You do want it to be just functional to hold the layers together. Now, when would you want that? There are a couple times, even though I did just say that was boring, but the first time is free motion quilters often use stitch in the ditch to travel from one spot to the next spot. So it allows them to do intricate free motion designs and then travel to the next block without stopping and starting breaking their thread in between places. So that's a time you might want to use stitch in the ditch. It's just a way to get from one place to the other without having your stitches be obvious. Another time that I've occasionally used stitch in the ditch quilting is if I have embellishments on my quilt top that I want to stand out and I think that machine quilting might distract from that. So one example is this quilt that I have and this quilt has a lot of hand embroidery on it. So you can see I have the piecing and I have the hand embroidery. And when I was thinking about how to machine quilt this, I thought machine quilting might be really distracting. I didn't want any quilting to go through my hand embroidery and I didn't want anything to distract from my hand embroidery. And I knew it could really do that. So for this quilt, I did decide to stitch in the ditch. So my quilting stitches, just travel around these shapes. And so it is kind of invisible. I did want the quilting to be unnoticeable, to be really boring, because I really wanted to emphasize the piecing and the hand embroidery. So even though I don't normally do stitch in the ditch, occasionally it can be helpful. So what kind of quilting should a beginner do? I already said, beginner quilters shouldn't try stitch in the ditch, but what is a good beginner quilt option? Well, the one I recommend most often to beginning quilters is wavy lines with a walking foot. Wavy lines are very forgiving, they're very easy to do, and they work with so many great quilt patterns. If you're trying to do walking foot quilting and you want all your lines to be perfectly straight, that's a fun option, but then if you have straight, 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 and then one wavy line and straight lines, then that wavy line really stands out as a mistake. But if all your lines are wavy on purpose, then that just eliminates that problem. You don't have to worry about all your lines being identical. You don't have to worry about something standing out. So I really recommend that as a beginner technique. If you want to see how to do that, I have a full video tutorial that shows you how to do wavy walking foot quilting. And if you're interested in more easy quilting designs, I do have an ebook, Simple Quilting, that has 10 easy ways to finish your quilt on your home sewing machine. This will give you lots of inspiration for all your quilting projects. You can find links below for this ebook and for lots more quilting inspiration and tutorials at my website, evitastudio.com.